Hi everyone, welcome. Looks like we had a little snowstorm down here in my wormery. All that white powder on there. That's actually diatomaceous earth. I've been trying to see what I could do about combating flying insects. So on that system, I noticed a few flying insects over there. I figured as long as I had that bin out yesterday, I would throw a little diatomaceous earth on there. I've also got a couple other things going on, like that screen trying to keep bugs out of there. The zapper, obviously, making all that racket. I even tried setting up one of these apple cider vinegar traps in the hope that it attracts some bugs and zaps them. Luckily, I think one way or another, the numbers have been getting reduced, and I think it does stem back to the origin of the problem, which was the now retired system that these two bins here came from. But we're not here to talk about that system. We're actually checking in on this snowstorm bin. <laughs> otherwise known as our ping pong system where we've been going back and forth side to side applying feedings. I'm going to get this thing up on the bench and we're going to hopefully give it a feeding today. It's not easy to see but if you look closely there are places where it looks like there might already be some flying insects that have succumbed to the material. Here and there you could just see little bits of movement where you could see a bug that looks like it's been completely covered in the stuff. Here too you could see a couple of um, just kind of stumbling around having a hard time it's not easy to see you just have to sort of stand still and stare because sometimes the movement is very subtle but there's a bunch of them mixed up in this stuff the good thing is that once the time comes to lift up the plastic and work on the system you don't have to worry too much about this stuff getting into your system because it's all natural it's like fossils. <laughs> it's like fossilized um, underwater microscopic life. And I guess the reason it's on top of the plastic is because that's the only place here where it would work. Any place else would be too damp. If you don't keep the stuff bone dry, it becomes ineffective and useless. And I figured as long as the flies are used to, you know, circumventing the plastic cover to get down at the material that's inside the system they're going to just do what they're used to doing which is first land on the plastic or land on the tub before trying to dive down into the material to get at the food or the moisture or whatever it is that they're after in here and they're going to get caught in that stuff so it, it didn't take much you know I dusted it on like if I was preparing some sort of a pastry with powdered sugar I tried my best just to put it on very you know thinly but you know it's it's a little clumpy it, it went in in larger clumps here and there. Down here too I can see a good number of these little flying insects so I might actually you know do something like this in all my systems you know if this is really where they're getting their moisture and their nourishment from why not try to get right to the source of where they're going to be thriving in. Now that piece of a uh, coffee filter was just showing to us where we had last fed 17 days ago I got more information about this system here. <laughs> when are we going to finally get inside the bin and see a worm? Just really quick, it's 75 days of age at this point, and 17 days ago was the last time we fed. We fed a variety of different fruits and stuff. Um, but but a week ago we came in here after 10 days had passed already to see how that was coming along. We saw leftovers, so we decided at that time let's let it ride, you know, and. I guess before we feed, obviously if this is ping pong, maybe not so obviously, but if this is ping pong feeding style, the fact that we fed here last time indicates that we're feeding on the opposite side next time. So the feeding that's going to be applied goes in here, and I guess what went in here in a feeding prior was pineapple, which has pretty much gone nowhere so far from what I could tell. Not a lot of worm interest. So we might have to kind of adapt to the fact that we've already put something into the system that could take quite some time to break down but before we do that I'm just curious to see how this side of the bin is coming along and as far as leftovers and worm turnout so I'm gonna kinda upend it a little bit here to see how things look here's some leftover bedding paper this is some of the food unusually still holding on to some of the the fruit attached to the rind Obviously nothing that you and I would eat, but still something that the worms probably see as nice and juicy material to feast on. And then eventually that tough stuff on the very outside that turns to like paper at the end also breaks down, but that takes a lot longer. A little bit surprising that this 
17 day old cantaloupe is still in here as leftovers. I think there were other things put in here too besides cantaloupe, a variety of yummy things that they really enjoy eating. Let's see if we could spot and identify any other things. Pumpkin, I don't think the pumpkin went in this time. I think that went in a previous time, so it's been in here for some time now. Look at all these, something about pumpkin stem. Little worms really like it. I don't know why. Maybe they could burrow in its features. I'm not going to chip away at it. We'll just leave it be. But down here, it does seem like there's a lot more moisture than out on the top surface. Even though we had pretty thorough plastic coverings, the top of the material is unusually dry. All right, let's um, let's just let this feeding here continue. 17 days. A little bit surprising to see quite so many leftovers. I think we might have even had the um, what is this? I think we even had the cork in here. There's a cork that's kind of made its rounds in numerous bins of mine over the years, and it's gradually making progress, finally, it seems. So if we run into it, we run into it. We never really go out of our way to go, go finding it. <laughs> it just sort of creeps up, usually when we've completely forgotten about it. So let's, um, let's check on the other side here. So weird how it's a little bit dry. Um, you know what it is? I think I had the, the top of this arranged differently. I had cinched it in a few days ago to allow for a little bit of drying. Then it was only yesterday when I came in here. The, the powder that you see out here on the top surface is not diatomaceous earth. I came in here to um, dispose of some flour that I had been using to bread some chicken. <laughs> so the white powder inside the bin is food. A little bit of leftover flour. I figure let's dump it in here and we can see what happens overnight in terms of, you know, our worms coming up to eat it. It does seem like a few came out to the surface, but I didn't give it much attention when I first arrived. And it didn't really have a whole lot of time to be out there either. But still, that's just what that is. Um, so here's kind of what I was thinking. I'd like to resume feeding on this edge, but right now this edge is sort of um, piled high with fe a feeding that goes back not 17 days to the cantaloupe and other stuff over here. It goes back maybe another 10 or so days, so almost a month now since we put pineapple over on this side. Well, we checked in here 10 days ago to, not a 10 days ago, after 10 days had passed of this feeding being applied, we came in here to see if maybe we can add another feeding. We found a good bit of leftover, so we decided to hold off. Um, but this would have been the side that we would have fed on. So we checked it out. We said, you know, let's see how the pineapple's progressing. And we just didn't really see much, if any, worm activity on it. So it's still kind of holding together. The way this is <laughs> set up, it's kind of unusual. But I had, uh, this is the bottom of the, the pineapple over here. Oops, it's, now it's, it's breaking apart. So I had tried to cut it up in a way that I can kind of keep the entire outer skin of the pineapple as a single piece. So this was starring out in two different directions. And you can see this leg of it is about to break off too. And something's getting in here, something's turning this to mush, something's feeding on it, bacteria, something I would imagine, but I don't see any worms. Not even one. <laughs> I mean, okay, now I'm finally seeing a worm down here in the juicy bedding. I guess there's also lime lemon in here too, if we can find it. So we, we kind of threw a bunch of citrus at this system, you know, pineapple being citrusy. Lemons, lime being citrusy, there's a little, another one of those legs. And how do you like that? Our cork, <laughs> our cork keeps surfacing. And then here's um, another kind of the middle part of the core. Inside the middle of, you know, the inside of the uh, pineapple's a little bit tough. You don't eat that either. So, I don't know. I'm starting to wonder if maybe we kind of relinquish this uh, space here for the next ping pong feeding and maybe place all of this pineapple left over. I don't know, keep putting it back where it was and just let the new feeding coexist with the, the old. I guess we could do that. Just wasn't sure how much space it was taking up anymore. It does seem like it's kind of breaking down or at least collapsing a little bit. Some sort of maybe bacterial decomposition going on. Here's another chunk of that inner core. <laughs> 
but I think we could probably just return it down low. We'll plop a little bit of here. We'll throw a little bit of this bedding underneath it. And let it continue. There's time, you know, the system's only a couple months old. Two and a half months old at 75 days of age. And uh, only six feedings have come into here. So today's feeding that'll go in on top of these old leftovers will be feeding number seven. And then uh, I just hope that maybe the other food, whatever it is that I end up going upstairs to select for them, ends up drawing a crowd and maybe starting a little bit of the breakdown process of this pineapple. But, you know, I've gotten feedback from various viewers. Hey, it's going to take months before that goes anywhere. So that's fine. We're in no hurry. I even thought about maybe relocating it to the center of the bin. And then it would be caught in the in the traffic of worms going back and forth as we ping pong back and forth. I guess we always have the option to do that too, if we think it might help the breakdown. So it's um it's break time now. I've got to run upstairs and grab them a little something to eat that we could sprinkle in here. So I'll be right back and then we'll continue when I return. The assortment of foods they're getting is pretty routine. Almost every feeding of every worm bin gets coffee. And I've also got this old coffee filter here as well as the coffee filter that we were marking our feeding zone with over here. So since we've got a nice new one, we'll just put those into the feeding zone as bedding. How does that sound? So now I've got, besides coffee, a variety of, there's red cabbage, carrots, and beets, and this is just the stem of a grape. <laughs> I figure we'd throw that in there too, see how it goes. Maybe it'll just kind of serve as little little bit of bulk for the worms to play in or something like that. Let's see, I've also got some grit we can include down here. If it's in fact acidity, that might be putting the worms off. Maybe this will, to a certain degree, help neutralize that a little bit. And now since, uh, since I like to blend my coffee with the surrounding materials, I figured maybe we'd sprinkle a little bit way down low on top of the previous food. Here, we'll put this little, kind of little divider here so we can tell one from the other or at least see where the other one was after the uh, after the worms start moving in to work on it hopefully Let's see how that goes and maybe it'll attract a little bit of attention to the somewhat neglected pineapple <laughs> okay so this can be our marker to show where we last fed we'll I'll just drape that across the top Here's just another piece of uh, paper slash bedding that we can include with the feeding. Okay, not bad. I guess I'll backfill with some of the existing material in here. You know, for a 75 day old bin, I guess this is pretty normal to see, you know, a certain amount of casting starting to develop in between the bedding materials. Maybe not quite as far as long as you might expect it to be. That number that I had scribbled on the board, I already took the board upstairs when I went to get the food. <laughs> but it was um, it was it was the number that now included the extra few worms that we put in here the other day. We did a haul out of the cocoon nursery that we had initiated from the parent bin that these worms originally came from. So we had like a 60 some odd estimate of um, extra worms added into here. That was the average of about nine people who provided their input, so thank you. But, you know, there's no reason to prolong this. I think we're going to just backfill the feeding area. And I've now inadvertently um, relocated a few worms that I just spotted over here directly above the fresh feeding. Give them a little bit of an inside edge to the fresh food that's just been applied. Although, you know, I usually uh, tend to think that the worms are probably a lot more attracted to the food that's been in here for weeks. <laughs> All the stuff that's on this side is probably what they really like because it's already so heavily broken down. The stuff that just went in, you know, maybe not right away, but soon they'll be able to start nibbling on that as well. So I don't know. It does seem to me like the restoration of the diatomaceous earth powder coating out on the top of the plastic might be unnecessary because it does seem like the numbers down here are diminishing anyway. I think the real problem originated uh, over in another system. And these little guys might have just moved in here opportunistically, but I don't know, maybe I will uh, 
maybe I will start doing that as a sort of a practice because considering I put this diatomaceous earth on top of the plastic only last night and it was only out there a few hours it did seem like it um, did manage to uh, knock out a good number of them so maybe maybe that's just the trick right there you know intercept them as they're trying to get at their food source slash moisture source and, uh, and they don't stand a chance all right, everyone, that's it for today's check-in. I got a little bit of cleaning up and putting away to take care of, but I'm not going to keep you around for that. Before I go, let me just really quickly say thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye.